Yagero. Who's asking? I am. Yeah? And who are you? I ain't Daguerre, alright? You got the wrong guy. I don't think so. You know what I think? I don't care. I think you should die! <laughs> Always the same.
and welcome to How To Be A Great GM Presents The Training Grounds. My name is Guy and tonight we're going to be meeting a new GM and players as the GM takes us through another exciting adventure in the hopes of scoring well on the score sheet or improving an existing score. What am I talking about? Well, each of the GMs that are participating in Training Grounds have been given a predefined scenario that they will be required to run through the players tonight. The players are randomly drawn from those who volunteered to play in the game, as well as myself. And after 90 minutes of playing in the GM's world, the players and myself will get to score the GM based on certain criterion. The criterion I'm talking about is this. This is the scorecard that the GM will be aiming to try and hit the marks on. Now, bear in mind, the GM does not want to get the highest mark because that gives them no room for improvement or for betterment. This is not a competition about who is the best GM. This is a competition about oneself and improving on one's own abilities. Now, you can see we've got various categories there. We've got the rules. How are they applied? Are they applied correctly or at least appropriately? There's story categories. What's the tone or the pacing like? There are NPCs, critical elements of the game, of course. There's style and then, of course, table management itself. So what will happen is each of the players and myself will give the GM a score out of five, meaning that there will be a total of 25 points that they can score per item. And at the end of it, I will present the score the uh, the scorecard back to the GM and to you, the viewers, and uh, take them through some of the salient points, areas that can be worked upon and improved upon for the following week. Of course, if this is the second week that they're participating, we will have that score sheet from last week. We will have a look at it and see where they should be aiming to improve. Now, at home, of course, you are watching this. You have that wonderful ability of not being completely ensconced within the game, not trying to play the game. So think kindly when you are judging uh, these individuals and uh, look at the scores and see how they would apply to yourself. At least that's part of the plan. But enough from me. Let's get on with the show and let's meet tonight's GM. Hello and welcome to this evening's show. It is the last show of Training Grounds uh, for Season 1 and um, hopefully it's going to be a good one. Now, just before we get going, a few little housekeeping rules and things. Please, in chat, discuss what you think about the GM and the players freely and openly. Disagree if you wish to disagree. Agree if you wish to agree. But always try and state your case as to why. So if you feel that one of the players or the GM did something that you disagree with, tell us why you disagree and how or what you do to try and fix it or perhaps what mistake or problem it may cause in your opinion. Remember, we are here to learn from one another and, well, that's best done with open dialogue around every topic. At the end of today's session, which will be in about 90 minutes, 95 minutes, give or take, there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions directly to the GM as to the players as well. Please preface your question with the word QUESTION in caps lock so that I can see it and then oppose it to the appropriate person. With that, it is uh, my good honour to introduce for his second round uh, our GM and new players for you all to get to fall in love with. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the stream. Hello. 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 <laughs> there we go. So we have uh, Andres returning to us. Um, what are you hoping to work on this evening, sir? Oh, number one, time management and obviously improve on the combat and making sure everybody has a turn and yeah ha making it fun make it fun for everybody even for the watch for the for the players and also for the watchers there we go there we go absolutely we have gabe joining us once again you were in the very first show and you are in the very last show hmm auspicious hmm. i hope not <laughs> yes if we all die we now know who it was okay there we are anyway you gonna be playing tajo then um let's see who's going to be playing Bracklore? Uh, that would be me fantastic what do you plan to do with Bracklore? because you you said you've sort of binge watched all these episodes yes. now so you've seen many incarnations of the mighty i've Black. seen a lot of varieties um i feel like 
there's a sort of middling idea of where he is pers in personality. He goes from uh, everything from a terrified little lizard man to a demigod uh, trapped in a tiny form. So I want to see if I can kind of run the gamut of that in one performance uh, within reason. Okay, looking forward to that one. Then playing Binson, who do we have? Uh, I'm Jonathan. I'm excited to be here. Thank you very much. And I have never played a rogue at a table before, so I'm very excited. There you go. Now, you are also the GM uh, of your group, is that correct? That is correct. Yep. So playing is a, a rare opportunity? It is. Uh, I do one shots here and there. Um, but this is This is really yeah. exciting. There we go. There we go. And then joining us from the Netherlands is uh, Vincent playing Sasha. Yes. Now, Hi. you have an interesting group that you role play with uh, at home. Uh, who do you role play with? Because I think it's awesome. Yeah, I role play. I DM a group with my uh, girlfriend, my mother, my brother, and his girlfriend. It sounds fantastic. But, and your yeah, your mother plays a uh... half orc barbarian. <laughs> <laughs> there you are. It sounds awesome. Absolutely, absolutely awesome. Okay, I will be playing Ishka, and before any of you ask any questions, if you remember what happened last week, Ishka um, fell into some lava, but she got better, and she's back, and that's all that we're going to say on that. So, with that in mind, I need to set up your time, GM, because you will have 90 minutes once I give you the start signal. To run us through this uh, scenario at the end of the 90 minutes, we will then cast our votes and give you your score. Alrighty, so here we go. GM, we are in your hands starting now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to do things slightly differently today. I've done a lot of work and I needed a bit of a rest. So I'm going to let my players give a bit of an explanation of where they are and how they feel. Tajo, what's happening? A Laldrin Gallondale was given the baby dragon and the small dragon emblem by the party. The Thane McDragon II bid us farewell and fair travels indeed. Uh, following, we went to a neighboring province to the barony of Baron Rubenstein. I do so enjoy rolling my R's. Uh, your party, uh, excusing us, arrived at Middleheim, the capital, a few weeks ago. Wow. Ishka, and what followed then? Well, once uh, we got here, we started to look for work, yes? Because we need work, and Baron Rubenstein, we don't want to necessarily cause problems just yet. So that's why Binsen and Zasha can't go off and do the usual thing that they do for us to find work. So therefore, we must do this real thing. And so we were putting up these posters for someone. Uh, posters say things I don't care. They don't say kill, so it's fine. But then I realized this is boring. I am not lumberjack or poster pusher. I am barbarian. So that means I look for barbarian work. I find barbarian work because I am good barbarian. And work is to report to Baron Rubenstein because he wants someone who is fast. Well, Benson is fast. He wants someone who is brave. Well, that's Sasha. And he wants someone who is, you know, a good uh, the thinking. That's uh, Braclo and Tajo. And you always need barbarians, so I am here. And so now this is what we are doing. I have told the party to decide this is the right course of action. Thank you. Thank you, Ishka. And Braclo. So, what was with you? Oh, well... Uh, the Baron did uh, request that we begin the uh, recruitment process for the uh, the army of uh, conscripts, and um, the job specifically that he hired us for, uh, despite Ishka's insistence that we are uh, beyond such things, uh, was to uh, place posters all over his domain, um, three for every village, uh, for every inn. Um, that is a great deal of posters uh, which I cannot carry. Um, perhaps one at a time, and, and I can place them higher than the others as they are terrestrial in nature, but uh, I am not bound by such things. Uh, the, the deal was uh, specifically that we would be 
uh, given accommodations and uh, food and uh, 250 uh, gold coins um, after a successful completion with uh, a 50 up front, um, which I imagine Binson has already squirreled away somewhere. Um, and uh, that's really all I know. Wow. Thank you. Thank you for that uh, summary. And Binson, what, uh, what, what says you? Oh, there's not really an issue. It, there's always a little bit unspoken to any contract. There's finer print in between the lines. So maybe three or four towns in, I might have gotten wind at one of the local inns that um, war broke out between Baron Rubinstein and the Thane McDracken. I'm sure it won't be a problem for us just because we're walking through Baron Rubinstein's lands while Thane McDracken wants to take back his keep from those very same lands. It's going to be fine. Isn't it good to be doing honest work where we're not getting fireballs thrown at us or axes or people trying to kill us? And I put out a tip jar. Wow. How full is that tip jar right now? Two copper, but I have high hopes. <laughs> Thank you. And Sasha, how do you continue? Yeah, well, I mean, the job is easy uh, to, to, to travel around with a huge bunch of poster parchments and stuff. Uh, but I mean, I'm the brave one in the party. My sword is gathering a bit of dust at the moment. And of course, uh, yeah, I li like visiting the pubs, uh, getting food, getting paid, food stuff. So in that sense, I like I like life. But, you know, I'm also feeling a bit the, 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 the tension between between uh, Baron Rubenstein and, and, and well, mm. I mean, Dwar the Thane McDracken too. So my sword is itching a bit. I don't know. Yeah. Wow. But, uh, I what like the, the money and the food. What does the poster say? Ah, uh, the poster. Well, of course. I mean, we're we're putting up posters to 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 recruit people uh, to defend the homelands uh, because we're under imminent threat. I mean, well, we have the the rumor of the the the, the war between McDracken and uh, the imminent Rubenstein, war. But, yes. Yeah. Exactly. Uh, and of course, the dwarves want to take over all our homeland and livelihood, and we cannot let that happen. So we need to we need to find people, and well, gather the strength so we can I can take my greatsword again and uh, well, prove how brave I am. Wow! Yeah. So the Baron is actually actually asking for the all, all able males above fourteen uh, to go and join uh, uh, at the sheriff. Go and see the sheriff and get connected with him. Obviously, they will receive uh, pa fam uh, sorry payment and uh, army rations and drink. So that should help them. Now and the spoils, of course, we divide uh, among and, each other. Yep, and I the mean, spoils. That's obvious. Binsen is. I see Binsen's look already. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you are setting up these posters, hoping to help the Baron find his army. Um, you are currently staying at the uh, Prancing Pony Inn, and you are seeing you are seeing see, looking at your most magnificent setup of your first poster of the day. It's still wet, and the um, uh, the glue is kind of falling down. Um, you have a cart behind you with a horse tied up, and you have all the all, all, all the posters because as you were pointing out, there's loads of posters to be set up. Um, but you always have to keep them in safe locations. So you will have to put them in your bedroom potentially to make sure there's no harm done. And um, as you're admiring your wonderful work, you see a rider on a worked horse coming straight at you. And the smell of the worked horse uh, and sweat and sweatened leather fills your nostrils. There's a man riding uh, the horse, the rider. He's well dressed and bit very dusty. He carries the emblem of the Baron Rubenstein on his chest, um, and he comes up to you and he says, "Hey, are you the ones that the Baron hired for uh, the post to work?" Indeed. Why? Yes, we are. Isn't it well, obvious? Where are the posters? There are no posters set up. But this one right here. 
Look at it. It's beautiful. That is the only poster I have found. I have gone through every village you said you were going to visit, and there are absolutely no posters up. Ishka steps forward. Are you trying to say that we are doing a bad job, little man? My name is Rolf Muller, and I am the emissary of the Baron himself. And I have been sent to follow you and make sure your work is done. And to my surprise, none of the posters are up. You have spent a week and not managed any work. And you have 24 hours to give me a reason and an understanding of why you have not put the posters up. If uh, Emissary you... Muller, if you, if you have a moment, I do believe that the contract was specifically to hang the posters. Yes, that was the contract. Absolutely. Yes. And to see yes. them. Was the contract also to provide security for the posters? No, but there should be... Well, then in that case, once we abandoned those posters, as was the contract, it was we up to anyone no... else there to... It was anyone else there could have just ripped it down. The ones that I put up were quite high, so they might have needed a ladder. But uh, this... I can tell you, if we, if you had hired us to keep them up, we would have guarded them with our very lives, sir. I with our only... very lives. Okay, thank you, sir, or um, scaled sir. You have made the point, but understand that I can see no posters. I can only see one poster up, and this is not acceptable. You have 24 hours to tell me what is going on, and... If not, you will have to return the advance payment and you will be considered as conspiring against the barony. So, what? please provide evidence. E e evidence? Evidence that people just Posters came can by be and taken down. down posters? Yes. I'm going to fly up right now and take down the poster no, that we've no, just no. put on. It was and so now I'm going to put it back. Yeah. There, now it's back. This is a very easy thing to do, Emissary Muller. I understand. Anyone could have taken it down. I, I believe that is sufficient explanation as to what occurred. Someone in your townships, in the barony, is taking down the posters. Now, again, if you wish for us to investigate whom is involved, then we could certainly do that for an additional fee. That is, of course, above and beyond the original 250 gold piece agreement. Let's see, Bracklor. Sorry, yes, I do know your name. Um, you do. I'm quite memorable. It is clear. It is clear that something is happening. I will leave it in your hands, and I will be staying close by, and I will meet you tomorrow to have a further discussion of the events. Please investigate. Call, call your contacts uh, around the area and find out exactly what is happening. And then we can discuss tomorrow. I will le I'll be lenient with you, Bracklor. And your uh, Binson is your leader, I believe, of this merry party. Indeed. Yeah. Well, we will Team have a discussion manager. tomorrow about the occurrence. But I have no evidence at this stage of posters being up. I will give you the benefit of the doubt. But tomorrow I want answers. By tomorrow. Absolutely, Emissary Muller. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'll be off and I will see you tomorrow. With that. Safe travels. He rides on his horse and he goes off. Mm. All right, Vincent, how much of the gold did you spend already? Um. How would you feel if I said all of the gold? And. Um, Smoke begins to waft from my nostrils. It does not matter. This little worm who is a spy for this baron has come and challenged us. Called you a liar directly, Bracklor. I say we follow this emissary back to whatever hole they're hiding in, and we show them just how dedicated we are to uh, using the posters to advance the cause. I say we use his blood to nail the posters onto the walls. 
I would have, a, a I very bones like... work better. Blood for, for the ink, bones for the nailing. Now, I, I mean, I wouldn't say it like Ishka, but I kind of agree. I mean, I cannot even fight at this moment, so we, we had this job of putting up posters, and now they're even saying that we didn't do that. So, what's the point? I, I don't trust this guy. And, and he's been pretty nasty to us. I mean, I, mean, you, you I would say you shouldn't trust him. Regardless of whatever the case may be, we are the subject of some cruel scrutiny to which we must find an answer to nonetheless. So where should we start our search? Well, Ishka wants to go after Emissary Muller. I, I doubt mm. he, if he is complicit in the removal of the posters in an effort, have we wronged him in some way that would encourage him to frame us for not framing posters. Simpson, um, you have certainly have an idea. You have um, a criminal or a sub-legal background, and you think you could reach out to some of your contacts In, um, around the area. Well, I mean, part of where I spent the gold, I, you know, a little lay of the land, and it turns out that, uh, well, so the Dragon Lord Malatrix used to control this area. And while Dragon Lord Malatrix was in charge, the Baron didn't pay his taxes like one doesn't. And now the Thane is coming to collect on the debt, hence the keep. Perhaps someone from the Baron's organization is, or from the Thane's organization, is trying to undo the Baron's war efforts. I think okay. I should reach out to those contacts. Uh, well, you, I... You'd mentioned at one point that he was going to declare war on the, on the dragon. So I, I would imagine hmm. the conscription efforts uh, would not be in his best interest. Hmm. So, yeah, Vincent, he, you kind of have a, a, a chat with some birds around the area and you manage to get an appointment uh, later on this afternoon or tonight, sorry, at the Prancing Inn. So, um, you are to wait there at the Prancing Inn and hopefully uh, get a bit of more insight of what's actually happening. So um, to end this phase, I'd like to everybody receive an inspiration point. I really enjoyed that uh, role play. Thank you very much. And I will move it towards the actual Prancing Pony. Okay. So you're at the Prancing Pony. <sighs> It's the evening, obviously. You've taken in your posters uh, into the inn. Um, what are you all wearing at this stage? Are you uh, obviously wearing a full armor? Are you not? Are you wearing some weapons? Are you not? Uh, understand that you are in a common ground of uh, an inn. And yeah, what do you feel like you should be wearing? I'm dressed in my vestments. Thank you, brother. I, yes, I, I have the robes of my former existence as a acolyte. Uh, they are colored. Uh, there are uh, stripes going down with the primary being red, but there are also uh, green and blue and white and black stripes going down them. You have so many colors in your clothing. How do you not get headache? Look what oh, I I'm wear. I'm not looking at them. It covers the essential. It's all black. Yes, and it's quite a lovely shade of black, absolutely, Ishka. But, Lady Ishka, I will say that I do not have to look at these. My enemies do. Ah, it's like Perhaps. mesmerize. I see. Precisely, Lady Ishka, precisely. Pre do you think perhaps maybe you could add a splash of color to your raiment to confuse and uh, trouble your enemies? Yes. Confound Every now and again, it gets covered in red. <laughs> My okay. favorite color. So, Tajo, what are you wearing? Uh, Tajo is, is dressed in a simple uh, cleric's tunic, but he does have the, the holy symbol from his former order underneath his tunic, and he just kind of, you know, is uh, rubbing that underneath the shirt while just uh, quietly contemplating at the bar. Not drinking, but just... Thank you. Have you got any weapons on you? Uh, 
the only weapons I have are the longsword and crossbow. Uh, if I could somehow manage to have a, a dagger just in case, because, you know, a longsword and armor seems a bit much for just okay. a tavern visit. No problem. You have a, a, a dagger with you, acquired with some of the money that Vincent spent. Um, luckily, with some interest in this aid of, uh, way of keeping his uh, party well uh, managed. Um, Ishka, what are you wearing? Ishka is wearing what Ishka always wears. The remnants of her downfall and disgrace. Her exile from the homes of her noble family. Is, uh, you know, functional tight pants and that's... Oh yes, and then functional top which keeps everything in because certain people don't like to embrace their own bodies. And, and pockets. Yes, lots of pockets on the belt and around the bandolier. Yes, pockets. And uh, then she probably has uh, battle axe at her side because why would she not have battle axe at her side? It's not that big. It's functional. It cuts sandwich uh, when needed. Okay. Vincent? Vincent has taken uh, somewhat of a cue from Ishka. Uh, I'm wearing... The, the robes of my tra uh, the, the garments of my trade rather which is a nice tight fitting black jerkin and i have gray pants on i don't have a lot of pockets because that's how you tend to lose things but i do have a tightly bound belt with lots of pouches that have all been tightly bound and tight and um and over that i have a uh, apron, a nice leather apron, because I am sitting at the bar as well. And whilst I ever so often take a drink from my flag, and I'm also tinkering with a small little construction uh, at the moment, it just looks like a kind of a skeleton of some kind of lizard creature. Mm. Wow, I'd like to know more of in the future. And Sasha, what are you wearing? And sorry, Vincent, what weapons are you? Have you? Are you? Uh, um, this is a social engagement, to... so I do have daggers because, as Tacho said, why not? Um, and a short bow, just in case. But I think I would have left my rapier to the side. I have Ishka and Sasha, so what do I need with a long pointy thing? Thank you. And Sasha, what would you be wearing and what weapons would you be wearing? Sasha is also wearing a, a loose kind of rope tunic thing, dark gray, with a with a hood that she can put up if she wants to. But now inside, she uh, there's not so much light maybe, so she put it, uh, yeah, put it off. Uh, she's wearing uh, nice sandals that usually are a bit loose-ish, uh, but now she put them a little bit tighter. And since this weird conversation with this guy on the horse, sh she also dug up her great sword and she hides it under her uh, under her tunic. Uh, and okay. she made her sandals a bit tighter so she can run or sprint or move if she needs to. So you're wearing a, you're wearing your your sword under your cloak. So obviously it is a, a large uh, sword, I believe, and yeah. uh, it is kind of not very conspicuous. But okay. Yeah. Um, armor. Are you uh, wearing your armor? Not so much yet. No, I'm okay. afraid not. So the rest of your equipment. Oh, I, I, one 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 thing right real on? quickly. Um, I do also have my spell book with me as always, uh, and I have uh, put on my mage armor as well. Okay. Uh, using a first level spell. Okay. Um, the rest of your gear, I'm assuming, is in your bedroom, uh, locked behind a, a door, obviously. Um, you are in a inn, the Prancing Pony, and there shouldn't be any problems there. Um, so you have you... One, one caveat. Yes. Um, I am sitting on the stack of posters we have left. Okay. Just to get up to bar height, and just in case, we're going to keep the posters. That is a lot of posters, Vincent. I think maybe you can keep some, but there is a lot of posters, and some that, of them need true. to be somewhere. So you tell me where those posters are. Uh, well, I'll sit on a couple. Racklord, you I can sit, sit on, on the rest. I can sit on the rest. <laughs> That'd be table height. I need to be able to reach the, the surface of the table. And okay. I did a lot of posters for that. You do need a lot of posters. But okay, yeah, there's still at least one barrel left, and I just need to know where that barrel goes. Probably in the room, I, I would imagine. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I've been now, thinking about these poster thieves. 
I say we mix poison into the glue that we use to put poster on wall. That way when thief comes to take poster... They, oh, they die have to of lick poison. It. They have to that's lick a, it first. That's they say the idea. poster tastes nice. I don't there know. Are, there are contact and, poisons. Uh, there are and, poisons. And yes. pray tell what if an innocent grabs it instead? They shouldn't be touching poster. It's property of the, the Baron. Posters. Not yeah. at all. Uh, they shouldn't be, but they might. But they shouldn't be. Casualty of war. And if they, do, if they are touching <laughs> the posters, they are no longer innocents. Yes. Because they have touched of official barony documents. We could put on posters, do not touch. We could put on posters, do not touch, and we can write it in the blood of the emissary. I like it. Tell, have any of you ever met a nearsighted person? I mean, they practically have to be on top of the thing to be reading it, but I see your point. That's culling the weak. You put oh. it on the back of the poster, on the, the contact poison on the back. So they, you only get to touch it if they're on, if they are taking it down. And that's it. Hi. Do we know well, if the poster that is that we just put up is still on actually, or is it also gone? Uh, that one oh. hasn't gone so far, but obviously you're, you're okay. keeping a good scrutiny and that was only, I mean, a few hours ago. I mean, yeah, yeah it's just still drying. Exactly. So unless the wind's yeah. taken it. Has anyone um, come by? Have I seen anyone come by? So no, I was going to say that Vincent, maybe um, you could consider this idea when your um, contact arrives and asking about poison. Um, just as uh, just at that point, um, obviously you're in the prancing pony. The, lit, the light is dim. Um, the full, the, lit, the inn is full of rough-looking people. Um, is there a hooded man in the corner smoking a long pipe? There is. Yes, strangely <laughs> enough. Avoid that man at all costs. <laughs> and some smaller people walking around talking about something about a ring. But yeah, we'll we'll nah, we'll ignore those for now. And um, look at one of them and say it comes in pipes. Um, there is a smell of B.O. unbearable, but uh, you, you're accustomed to this. Um, but ah. you, you are here to serve the best pork shoulder with honey roasted potatoes and veggies. And the gravy is scrumptious. So, yeah, you, you, that's the meal. I once stayed in cathedrals a thousand feet high, looking down on the world. And now I'm in the prancing pony. <clears throat> How was the food in the cathedral? It was life changing. It was this sublime. It improved your life, Lady Ishka. No, it changed the life of Pig. <laughs> so, as you're having this kind of formal discussion over, over, around your table, um, Vincent, you recognize a uh, bold per man looking uh, a little bit dodgy, um, not well groomed. Um, he has a bit of a tick in his eye. Um, and he's he comes towards you and you suddenly recognize him it's crab you've worked with him before and he's kind of uh yeah brought you uh some work before and this is the contact you kind of reached out and um he's yeah he comes up to you and uh, vincent vincent yeah oh. i got your message uh, we have to sit down have a chat quick yes yes Everyone, conspiratorial gathering in the middle of the bar. Yeah. Oh, yes. Bring bring the body out closer. Yes, yes. He's, very well. Um, his breath smells of cheap ale, and <sighs> he's very nervous. Um, you can see he's wearing a silver ring. Um, this indicates he's a member of the uh, Thieves Guild. Oh, member. Um, he says he sits down and, Vincent, okay, uh, things are happening very quickly. Uh, and he just under the table just passes you a parchment. He says, "Listen, there's a a gang. The, sw the swine gang. Uh, they're, they're yeah, they're up to something. There's there's the location of their hideout. Um, yeah, just be wary of what is happening. I need you to move as quickly as possible. Um, any questions so far? Oh, so many questions." Um, one, what are they up to? And then, boom, you see an, an arrow hit, uh, sorry, a dart hit the character, the scrab right there. And he goes, uh, 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 and he falls dead on the table. Roll for perception. All of us? Question. All of us, yes. All of us. Eleven. 
So highest number who I act have... first. Seventeen for me. 18. Seventeen's the highest. Nineteen for Sasha. Sasha. I didn't have enough posters. I couldn't see over the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Sasha. So you have a quick scan around. What do you do? What do you use your? So what do you actually do initially? Well, my hand grabs the great sword with well, my right hand, my strong hand, and I try to scan around. If I see some sudden move or see something duck away or something. Uh, that so as you have... quickly look, you see a pair of feet going up the steps very rapidly. Everybody else seems kind of not notice what's happened. What... The I've noticed the, the dead man at our table. Sasha, please, what do you do? Guys, someone run up the stairs. I'm going after them. Okay. Uh, maybe it's the guy who just killed this 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 dude, whoever he is. I Can I fly know. up on Sasha's and, shoulder? And and Sasha uh, bo- that uh, wants person. to bolt Ishka. off. Is that your next? Uh, yeah, I was on 17. Uh, do I see the feet as well? Uh, yes, you do. Binson, do I protect you or do I go after Assassin with Sasha? No, no, go kill assassin. I charge up the stairs after the uh, fleeing feet. Okay. Uh, next, uh, who has the next highest? Uh, I was I had 11. I, I was Tajo 17 had a 13. with Ishka. Tajo, 13? Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you do, Tajo? Um, so, arrow, neck, clearly a no healing spell. or <clears throat> Well, no. uh, firstly, I'm going to yeah, so nothing of like that is going to try and improve his condition. I mean, you could have a check of the body and see what's happening. Um, yeah, that, that could be an option, but that, I need a quick reaction. What are you doing? Uh, if I can try to save his life, I will try. Okay. So we'll leave it there for a minute. Uh, Binson? Uh, immediately going to keep an eye on the posters underneath me and then check for uh, Scrab to see if there's anything else on him besides this map. Okay. Bracklor. I have the two that we're leaving already left. Sorry, uh, can you say that again? Sasha and Ishka, are they, have they already left? So I'm asking for reactions. You can see they're lifting off from the table. As they're lifting off, I'm going to try and uh, light on the shoulder of Miss Sasha so that I can follow. Okay, do a dexterity check, please. All right. Straight dexterity will get me... Or acrobatics if you want, but yeah, you're cool. Uh, uh, acrobatics, well, that's not much better. That's, uh, <laughs> uh, that's going to be a seven. Okay, so you kind of try to grab, but Sasha is already two steps ahead, and yeah, you miss you miss the boat, shall we say, or uh, the human right. boat. And um, okay, so I'm just going to quickly describe what's happened. Sasha and Tajo, you start legging up the steps. Um, Sasha and Ishka. Sorry, Sasha and Ishka, uh, you're starting to run up the steps. Um, Tajo, you look at the body. There is nothing you can do. It was an immediate uh, death. Uh, the poison must have been some kind of very rapidly reacting poison. You can investigate further if you want. Um, Bissen, you start to search in his pockets and you get a um, three silver shillings, uh, silver coins, and yeah, uh, an ivory coin, but that's for, uh, yeah, redeemable at the house of your refute. Uh, it, it, yeah, it, repute, sorry. Um, so, Sasha, Bracklow, you're kind of trying to react, uh, get up uh, and steady yourself. And Sasha and Ishka, you start running behind this uh, person. Um, you go up the stairs and you immediately know, you hear door bang and it sounds very much familiar to this location of your room. So, we're gonna go another round. And Sasha, what are you doing? Sasha is continuing running uh, and, uh, if possible, just walking down the door uh, with her great sword ready to. Uh, yeah. So you're going to bulge the door as you get there. Obviously, the door, your door to your bedroom is locked, but you're going to try and bolt, uh, yeah. bang it. Um, what's the word? Sorry. Uh, shoulder it down. Shoulder it. Okay. Yeah, shoulder it down. Yeah. Okay, Ishka. We convinced that that's the door that this thing went through. Uh, yes, very much so. All right. Then, uh, in sync with Sasha, she will shoulder that door in. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Sasha is, 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 is shouting, Oh, I've missed this. This is fun. <laughs> <laughs> is that a headbutt, is it? Or what? <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, the shoulder and, well, maybe a bit of head. Okay, uh, Bracklor, Vincent and Tajo, you are with the body. Uh, you have, obviously, the parchment that the scrub has left you and the objects. Uh, what do you do? Well, um, I believe we found our contact poison, and I'm going to empty my water skin and fill it with as much of the poison as I can from the dart. Okay. I mean, yeah, no, it's already reacted, but okay, you can give it a shot. Um, Tajo okay. and Vincent? I'm uh, going to safeguard the map and look around nowhere near that. Just check the bar to see if anybody else is reacting, especially the door that he was watching us through the window from our other poster. Okay, Tajo? Uh, let's see, let me, would I need to make a heal check or, or what would I need to do to try and identify this poison? Mm, uh, do a medicine check. Medicine check, so that is at a plus four. Uh, that is a total of 15. Okay, so you know from what you've seen from the reaction, this has attacked the nervous system of the of the patient, shall we say, uh, or, the, or the corpse. Um, you're not fully aware of what kind of poison it is, um, but you know there was no way of uh, being able to save it. But this is a strange kind of fast-reacting poison, not easily found. Um, yeah, it's, it's a strange poison to be using in this area. Or, or kind of this reaction is very rapid. And Vincent, that kind of resonates with you uh, from your knowledge that, yeah, this is strange stuff to be using, okay? So Sasha and Ishka, um, just do a, uh, Ishka, you, Sasha, sorry, Sasha, do a strength tech. Uh, with uh, strength th uh, DC 13 uh, with advance uh, with um, advantage because these guys they're helping you my goodness uh, nine okay so you bang your head against the, out of uh... the way <laughs> <laughs> okay so you're trying to bang I got the too door. excited you hear this muff there's this kind of movement inside of the of the of the window I'm oh, sorry the window of the of the room and a, a, a window is being lifted up. Okay. <gasps> Can um, I shout down the staircase to Binson and Bracklaw and Tajo? Do I think they hear me? Shot. Yeah. He's going into the street! Okay. Next down. Uh, Sasha and Ishka, what are you going to be trying, trying to be doing? Let uh, me do the door, huh? Sure. <laughs> okay. did, did, we not, did we not get around this, this turn? Sorry, you went uh, straight back yeah. to Sasha and Iska and you didn't come back to us. You're absolutely right. Thank you, Bracklaw. So with uh, the body, I was giving a description of the body. Uh, you have right. been trying to put the poison into your flask. Um, but you can give me a uh, roll with um, yeah, um, your knowledge of... Uh, sorry, just let me have a quick look. Uh, nature, perhaps? Mm. Survival. Should we go? Ah, survival, yes. Yeah, go with survival. Uh, that would be a 12. Okay. No, unluckily, it doesn't seem well. You don't know. But I could use my advantage. I could use my uh, DM's inspiration? Uh, inspiration. Go for it. Uh, 14. Okay. So, unluckily, you missed with that roll. Okay. Um,. With um, the next round, so you hear obviously Ishka shouting out from the top of the staircase, and what do you do? Uh, Tajo immediately runs out the door around the building to where our side of our, our room is on that side of the building. Okay, all right. Since I tried to go. do the poison last round, do I do I get to uh, do something this round or? Yeah, I, I mean, I, yeah, I mean, can I try playing... and get on Tajo's shoulder this time? I think you can, and, and, and unless Tajo says no, you, it will be an automatic. Come on. Okay. Very well. Uh, Onward! Vincent? Vincent will awkwardly scoop up his bag of stuff and his, his as many of the posters as he can fit under one arm and just kind of hobble after <laughs> the rest of the party. Okay, there's loads of posters under, right uh, under you. your bum, so obviously <laughs> you're kind of <laughs> fatigued or you got load, you're encumbered with loads of posters running around. <laughs> Okay, Sasha and Ishka, I suppose you're going to try and open the, uh, the, the door and yes. give it a shot. Ishka, you try it. I'll try to kick in the lower hinge. Advance. Yeah, with an with a advantage. <laughs> Alright. DC 13. Natural 20. Okay. You smack the door open. 
uh, the door completely folds flat, obviously. Um, you, the first thing you notice is the smoke in the room. And uh, the, the, door, the, the window is open. And you just see a figured cloak running out onto the rooftops. Okay. Now, next round. Obviously, Tajo, Braclo, Vincent, you are outside in front of the inn. Um, you see a kind of figure running over the top of the buildings, um, but this is not a very straight-lined uh, village or town. But um, so you are going to have to, um, yeah. Tell me I reckon it's within one hundred and twenty feet. Um, it could be yes. I would like to. Uh, br- Launch a firebolt at it. Go for it. Uh, that is 23. Ooh, okay. Damage? Uh, that is a... Sorry. Uh, apologies. Supposed to roll them at the same time. Uh, three points of fire damage. I am a mighty fire dragon. So you see you, you hit him. Not only do you hit him, but he, it, the kind of hit makes him wobble, and he kind of... Surprise, but he kind of keeps his balance and he keeps on running and he jumps over uh, a rooftop and you start I've to slowed him down for you. Um, yeah, the outside it is quite misty, so he's going into the mist now and you won't be able to uh shoot any more arrow. I mean, if you can if you can follow him, great, but yeah, right now it's going to be tricky to keep on firing that uh, the, the spells at him, the fire darts. Um, Ishka and Sasha, what do you do? Have they set the posters on fire in the room, in the barrel? Yes, they have. Does it look like there's anything that could be salvaged by pulling them out of the fire, or does it look like it's, it's quite extensive? So it's just, the fire's just starting right now. Okay. Um, so you could try and put it out. But if you left it, yeah. Uh, Sasha, than- do you go catch this man? You're faster than I am. I prevent fire, yeah? Yes, I was uh, wanting to propose the same. I'll jump out the window and try to run after the, the, the guy. And I'll okay. try and put the fire out or salvage as much of the posters as we can. Okay. Yeah. Um, um, I will, I will, while I r- jump out the window, I'll try to get a javelin from m- m- next to my bed stand that I okay. can, could maybe throw after it. Okay, after it's it. going to be tricky. Um, if you're, yeah. you're going to be running on the rooftop, okay. if you are yeah. with a weapon in your hand, you are going to have to do uh, dexterity checks with disadvantage. Um, so just to let you know. Um, okay. And because the, the roof, the roof is actually quite slippery. It's been wet, and yeah, you go, you put your feet on, and the first thing you notice is uh, one of the uh, tiles falls to the slide and falls at Tajo's feet at the bottom. Oh, that's um, nice. Okay, you'll be fine. What, exactly. <laughs> what do we do, um, Sasha? You're running behind, I am assuming. Ishka, you will be turning, the, uh, putting the, the, the actual uh, posters off. Tajo, Braclo, and Vincent. How um, high are the roofs? Uh, they're two stories high. There's two stories high. Mm. So um, I could potentially fly up to one of them. Yes? Um, I'm not too sure about flying at this stage, uh, Braclo. Uh, you you uh, don't believe I could reach the distance with my uh, current speed? Yes? Yeah, I, I think more... If like I was it, to it dash, glide, if I was to... glide, not, not actually like fly... I can glide. All right, I, I had a flying speed of 30, but that's fine. Um, do I have a walking speed of 30 then? Yep, okay. I, I'm, well, I'm just trying to determine. Do I, do I have a walking speed yes, of 30 do. or a flying speed? So you have a walking speed of 30, and you can glide 30. All right, point, from fair a enough. Point to lower All right, Tacho? Oh, geez, you caught me mid-drink. Um, yes. Uh, Tajo is going to be running across the ground as best as he can to try and keep up with and then hopefully uh, get in front of the person who is running across the roof. Uh, Tajo, so I'm going to lead you to toss me. To, to toss you? I'm going to lead you to toss me up to the roof. I can't fly up there. I can only glide. Uh, then if I can, what I would like to try to do is get ahead of the people, the the, the runaway, whoever that may be and then uh, get in front of them, and then that way I can toss Bracklore at the person as they're maybe trying to to uh, jump from one roof to another. Okay. Um, it is going to be tricky, but okay, we can give it a shot. Uh, Benson, what are you doing? Uh, I'm actually going to... Benson will take out his grappling hook and start trying to throw it to get up to the roof. Right. Okay. 
Um, so this is happening very rapidly. I understand that uh, the uh, rogue or the assassin is running very quickly. The only person who can really try and catch him at this stage is Sasha um, because he's going into the mist. Um, you can all try absolutely and then help Sasha if something happens. I'm no problem with that, but just be aware that you will be following Sasha more than the actual uh, assassin at this stage if Sasha manages to keep up. So Sasha, no. I need you to do the first jump over the uh, the first hall, the first the first space. It's kind of small. It's only a uh, dexterity four. Should be easy enough. With disadvantage still. Done. If you were, if you're still wearing, if you got your javelin in your man in your hand, absolutely yes. I think she is. I think I am. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, that's a, a, a nine. Okay. So you jump over and um you can just barely see the rogue keeping running and he's doing a bigger jump now um between, how far away is he uh maybe i don't know just 30 feet uh more or less or no um you can just barely see him uh, distance wise sorry i'm a meters person so maybe around 15 to 20 meters okay 60 okay. feet yeah i think us americans can accommodate you yeah um um Ishka, you try. Could... Sorry. Oh, yeah, sorry. Go, yeah. Sasha. Go, no. go. Sorry. Well, I, I just keep going after him and try to reach a point where I may be close enough to, to throw the javelin just after him to get him off balance and throw him off the roof. So, because of the mist, you're not really going to. Each time you try and stop to try and shoot something, you're losing yeah. time and it's, you're not going yeah, exactly. to be able to, 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 to use that uh, uh, missile uh, weapon. But am I catching up to him or losing if... him? I mean, if you stop to try and throw, yeah, you're gonna can't, you're gonna start missing him. Okay. Yeah, but in in general, am I losing him because then I will throw as soon as possible, and if I'm catching up, I will wait until I throw the javelin. So the javelin is a hard. Uh, if you stop to throw, you will miss. You will not. You will miss. You the, the, you will not see the target. Um, that's what I'm trying okay. to explain. Okay. Sorry. Yeah. Then okay. I will just keep running. Okay, so you keep on running. Um, Ishka, you're putting the fire out, I'm, I believe. Uh, so you're, you're okay with that. You're, 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 you're putting that out. Um, Tajo, um, Braclo, you were going to throw uh, Braclo up in the air, I believe? Yes. Okay, so um, do, do just try and do a ooh, um, athletics check. Absolutely. Do you fold your little wings around yourself so you're like this little leathery ball of Bracklaw? I am aerodynamic. <laughs> I am throwing my wings back and I am an arrow. Fire at will. Uh, natural 10 with no bonus. Okay, uh, Bracklaw, you have a very aerodynamic position and you kind of fly out, um, but a kind of Tajo's roll hasn't been like kind of high, strong enough, and you're like, and you're kind of getting a little bit short. And yeah, I think it's time to try and glide down and try and give it another shot. Um, Vincent, you were trying to throw your uh, grappling hook. As I as I ready it, I'm going to look around because I didn't. I checked inside the bar. Is there anything else going on out here? Or is it just this one assassin? So with all this screaming and shouting, people are out of the county and starting to move about the bar, coming out of the bar, and they're all asking what's happening to you. Um, but yeah, that's kind of a bit of a commotion happening right now um, around the area. Okay, so it looks like this agent was working by themselves. Uh, yeah, you would think so. Okay, Sasha, um, you reach uh, another uh, jump. Um, you have difficulty eight this time. Um, what? Yeah, roll with a disadvantage if you're still running with your um, uh, lance spear. Oh, sorry. Blip. Um, I keep running. Uh, I have to throw, sorry. Yeah, somehow I, I zone out for a second. Um, what did you ask me? Okay, so I'm asking you, you've just reached another jump. Uh, and yeah, you need, I will you jump. Need to roll another dexterity check with a uh, decent yeah. eight. Um, that's a um, 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 14. Okay. Is that with disadvantage, I believe, yeah? Yeah, I go roll okay. a 14 and a 16. Excellent. Okay, so you keep on. You, nice kind. You are uh, managing to keep up with him. Um, and you see. Um, Okay, you see uh, the rogue figure do a massive jump 
uh, and he just grabs onto the side of a, of a, of of the of the fence of like the, the next rooftop, and he's kind of starting to slip. His fingers are starting to slip, and he and he's falling down to the ground. Um, Ishka, what are you doing? Once I've made sure that the uh, posters are not um, going to be destroyed by any fire, Charged, putting yeah. not burned, not burned, <clears throat> no, no, no smoke coming out. I will then rush downstairs because I will. Re I have remembered that my allies were using some as uh, perches, and if they had run out to try and apprehend this individual, they probably left them behind. So I will then go and try and gather up the remaining posters that they've left behind, unless, unless, unless anyone's looking at the posters i mean right now the commotion is all around I and mean, you go i'm assuming you've gone downstairs and yeah. you're having a look um okay I'll, I'll give you a description in a second um tajo bracklow and binson all right do we see uh the individual um falling no only only sasha sees that only sasha sees that all right um and we don't see the individual at all no no all right um so it's mist, there's a mist, there's a heavy mist, and yeah, you are not able to actually see. Uh, you can just, uh, I wouldn't say, yeah, maybe you, ca you can't see. Can Sasha. I light my staff to uh, to cut through the mist a bit? I mean, it's like having a, a, a light in the, in the mist. You light the mist up, if that makes sense, yeah? You don't see any further. I mean, not greatly. Obviously, it helps with looking at the floor and making sure you don't step on any dead rats. Um, all right. Can we see Sa we can we can see Sasha? Yes. Uh, just about. Yeah. Sasha is about to. Uh, he. I'm gonna ask Sasha also what she's doing. If you want, Sasha, what are you doing? Uh, Sasha is standing still just before the big gap, looking down to see if he's still moving. Uh, so you you look down and um, you see a body on the floor and what looks like a watermelon spread all over the floor. Found him. <laughs> Ah, yes, where is he? Where is he? Down here. But that's about it. <laughs> Tajo, Tajo, quickly, there's someone you can heal. We round the corner and then until we see the melon spread and then it's like, are we sure about that? Okay. I glide down and immediately start searching for poison. <laughs> okay. Poison it takes you more than you anticipated because although Sasha is right over the top and easily you can kind of have a communication to get to that kind of location you kind of had to go around a few uh, streets and it takes you a few a few well, we, we can assume it's it's more there. than around perhaps <laughs> yes so um you get to the body and um, I'll leave it there for a minute and Ishka, you are obviously in the ta in the tavern right now, and the um, there's a bit of a commotion. What's happening? There's people moving around. Um, oh, somebody's dead. There's a dead body on top. Um, your posters are still there. Um, yeah. What do you do? Well, she unfortunately every she gathers up all the posters and dutifully takes them back to the room, grumbling under her breath that this was. <laughs> Beneath us to even think about doing this stupid job with posters <laughs> is dumb idea where it come from is crazy. Uh, uh, yeah, she's just quietly seething because by virtue, she's now been the one who's left at home. Okay. Um, so at the body, Sasha, what are you doing? Because obviously you've seen the Tatio, Bracklow and Vincent kind of Serpenting themselves to the location, you've know, been pointing them out to get there. Yeah. Um, I'm going to stop when, now, like a, this kind of uh, turn round, so we can all have a bit of a discussion if necessary. Ishka, if you want to uh, regroup with the team or stay at the at the inn, looking after the the, the posters, up to you. Um, and basically, can, you go. Can over... Benson call Ishka? Yeah, absolutely. There's no, Ishka, no problem they, with that. They they found our target. Come on. So, um, yeah, there is no head to identify per se, um, but you investigate the copy, uh, the body, sorry, and you see uh, on the inserts of the forearms, there's uh, two blue, well, there's a, on each one, there's a blue mantis standing up on its hind legs. And um, Binson, you recognize this as um, the blue mantis death cult. Uh, it is a foreign assassin group 
who are experts in poisons and stealth and they always work for hire and that is expensive hire not any um lowly person can do that okay um i would a death cult charge so much they're just going to kill themselves it looks like it maybe it's just a name they can't take it with them this sounds super evil now do i think the swine gang would have the resources to hire the blue mantis death cult um, it would be very unlikely from your unknowing, obviously, um, the, uh, they are kind of powerful, but they're not really, I mean, yeah, uh, that well off to be able to pay this kind of service. If Tacho were to use detect magic, <clears throat> excuse me, on the corpse, would he, would it be able to find anything on his person? Um, so you can do detect magic, but no, the, the, there's nothing magical per se on his body. Is there something poisonous, per se, on his body? So you have two dots. There's two dots left. And a broken blowpipe. All right. So. Vincent, we also had a location. We have very other. poisonous, two very poisonous yeah. dots, which in my hands are spears. Yes, Vincent. Sorry. Well, yeah, they, uh, I don't find anything else on the body. Um, we could try checking out this map to the swine gang. So in the on the parchment, um, there is a kind of a crudely drawn map. Um, you kind of recognize the area. Like it, it points to like a tower uh, on the uh, like lowest side of the uh, town, where uh, yeah, the the, po the most poorer of of the town. Um, and that's uh, yeah, that's kind of pointing a uh, with a kind of crudely words swine uh, gang. We need to there. go here. Oh, there you go. There, yeah, I like the map. Exactly. That's very much like it. How did you take like that? Ah, magic. I passed it on <laughs> through the waves. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Uh, any preparations uh, before you head out? Armor and weapons. I'm going to definitely put on my armor. Uh, yeah, salvage anything we can from the room. They were trying to destroy posters with fire. How stupid. Why they try burning? Actually, it could be quite effective. Yeah, exactly. F fire and paper are quite mortal enemies. It is very difficult with my spell book for me to exist. You well, think... Eh, it doesn't matter. They fail. So, they, you kill, mm -hmm. yes? I, I mean, I'd like to. We no, have to you kill the assassin who killed our contact, yes. The revenge um, has been served. I believe his murderer was more the law of gravity. I don't or care the what law killed him. Is he dead? Uh, he, his head looks very much like you want your enemy's heads to look. Many, many pieces. I could not have mended it. It's good. Okay. So, um, you set yourself ready, obviously. Um, you kind of fix the door back to its location as best you can. Um, the, you toss a few coins to the innkeeper. Um, obviously, you ask for some kind of protection for uh, during the night while you're out, and he grudgingly uh, agrees, and um, you set out to the um, tower. Um, obviously, uh, it doesn't take too long to get there. Um, it's still uh, uh, there's a you see as you start getting closer a. Uh, dangerously look leaning tower it's kind of six six stories up and it is uh very old looking uh it's n not um there's there's a wooden fence fence sorry surrounding the tower and um you can see flights of stairs some of them are like between levels which are outside the building which is um common in this in this in this area um you see there's an op there's some open windows up at the top with some lights and some like kind of fuse coming out and um you look inside of the um area and uh you hear or see two mastiffs um around live just walking around Vincent these are the people who have been taking our posters though well before he died that scrab said they were up to something but 
apparently he couldn't tell me what because he died. So it's got to be bad, right? Or at least profitable? Well, I don't know. I mean, I think he was trying to signal something to you. He was winking the entire time. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just that's actually a really great point. Was he trying to tell me something in Thieves Camp? Um, no, he. From what you know him, he's not. He's notoriously known for like winking. But yeah, that's his tick when he gets really nervous. Yeah. Maybe he was just liking your outfit. Actually, that's part of what. Oh, well, thank you. So, I, mean, I, so I do try to look my best. So you hear the, the Mastiffs um, barking, um, but they're not kind of barking at you at this stage. They just kind of hear other dogs bark in the background. Um, what do you do? So we go in, we bring back one of these people to tell the emissary that we, he, they've been stealing our posters, yes? Yes, and then we collect an additional fee. Yes. yes. That's I'm sure there's fine. proof inside the tower. It is yes. a second job after all. But so, Sasha, that does mean we need to leave at least one alive. Yes. Well, yes. I mean, and dogs, dogs will You not can be live able to without help. most of your limbs. That is a I scientific that's fact. That's myself. Yes. H how do we get dogs to be quiet without alerting owners? Uh, they don't seem to be quiet now. I don't think they're really effective if they bark at all times, not just when there's trouble. The dogs well, bark different sounds when they're maybe scared. Maybe we, we, uh, we, we could tempt them over here with something curious and then make them very quiet with sharp and blunt objects. I, I could stab nice some meat with this poison dart. Mm. You could no. maybe not poison. Uh, Benson, would you be able to... Do you have a, like a sap or, or anything capable of uh, I'm stabbing something else? with this poison dart before we're done. <laughs> <laughs> if there's no one idea. else left but you, I... then that's what it's going to be. I'm Here not saying no, I'm just saying maybe later. Bracklor, have you ever seen jousting? I have, in fact, Fantastic. attended many a joust. I am going very to you... inappropriate for this situation, but I'll let you continue. No, no, it's great. Here. And I, he pulls out his backpack, he takes out this little mechanical dragon that he's been working on. So, how about you joust riding this fantastic clockwork steed into battle against the dogs and stab them with your mighty spear? I no? think this is glorious combat. <laughs> <laughs> Honor will be and brought am, to your house, Brackley. I am Nothing struck down just... <laughs> by this beautiful construction. Draconic made of this sort of coppery red metal. Oh, oh push, and I, push down the left horn. I, I reach out a claw and, and depress the horn. And the mouth there opens up and a teeny little ribbon of flame comes out. <laughs> <laughs> I light the ribbon on fire. <laughs> okay. So you're going to give this a shot, Bracklaw? You're going to try and jump on the um, claw? Hi am I, the... Don Bracklaw. <laughs> Here he comes to save the day. <laughs> okay, so you got two, your two darts on your hand, and you're I have to, my darts. To, you're trying to ride on the, on the um, on the dragon. <laughs> it shall be a charge for the ages. <laughs> Onward! And if nothing else, it's a beautiful distraction. <laughs> Precisely. What is the top speed of this steed? Five feet around. <laughs> This is going to take very long time. Okay. It's the distraction. I we actually go grip it around the middle and I begin flying it over. <laughs> Gliding it over. But okay, no Gliding worries. it over. <laughs> okay. So you find a gap and you manage to put him on. Uh, you jump on. And as soon as the mechanism's not work, working, obviously um, the, the dogs kind of are a little bit surprised. You see a face of surprise and they kind of work, look at you like this and move their head from side to side and they go closer to start to try and, and smell you. They're a bit looking taken aback. And yeah, Bracklow, what do you do? Uh, this is both of them? Yep, they're both directly right. in front yeah, of me. Right of you, yes, just like kind of, they're trying to smell you out. Like, they are so they are within uh, melee range. Yes, yes, they are. All right. Um, so 
I am going to. Uh, yes, I am going to change my mind and roast him with my breath weapon. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. This As they thing. are much larger, and I sort of just kind of, in the moment, they are two massive Cerberus-like beasts, and I just kind of let it all out. <laughs> okay. Um, this is a surprise attack. Obviously, they weren't expecting that. Uh, so feel free to, yeah, use a breath. But I angle my head as though it's coming out of my steed. <laughs> <laughs> this is the best retelling of Don Quixote ever. <laughs> Come, Sancho. <laughs> All right. Did you say Sasha? Oh, wait. Rocko, no, go. well, they're distracted. Let's get the door. Exactly. <laughs> Let's go, Ishka. Uh, we, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, Sasha yeah, walks up it. to the door. Okay. So there's um just before I uh Brackler, just give me a second before I let you roll that damage for All the right. weapon. Um so obviously uh the scene right now is uh Brackler on the uh clockwork dragon and uh the dogs are really intrigued what's happening and you're gonna try and leg it behind them. Um there is a front door with a block, uh not a lock with a wooden uh panel. It's like uh, a bar. Yeah, with a bar. The door is barred, yes. Yes, from the outside. And then there is a staircase that goes round the outside and into like a uh, like a door on the on the opposite side. So, um, yeah. Bracklaw, do you want to roll your damage now? And let me, yes. Tasha, Sasha, Anishka, Vincent, let me know what you're doing. You're legging it up. or you Are we going upstairs or in the base? Well, we don't want to be trapped, I guess, if we run up and some something comes out here. So maybe first check out the bottom. There, did you say there were open windows? Up at the top, yeah. The top. I mean, there are some windows on the other ones, in, the other, in each floor. There's some light. There's no light in the lower one. And um, there is a, uh, yeah, the top ones have open windows and there's fumes coming out. Mm -hmm. hmm. Just maybe a quick check. Ishka, you stand ready. I will open the... The bar, we just do a quick check and go up. Wait, the nothing. bar's on the outside? Yeah, the bar's on the outside. No, this is n this is not how it works. They can't come out ah, if there's bar on the outside. Something we take is stairs. Trapped inside. Yeah, upstairs. Is trapped inside. Yeah. Let's go yeah. stairs, yes. It, quick okay. question, is it fumes or smoke coming out of the top floor? Um, like, is what? it gentle wispy or is it clouds of black? It's smoke. not black. It's like, a color, like an orangey color theme coming oh, out. okay. Like a steam kind of thing, come, yeah, like... Okay, Bracklaw, Up roll your damage. All right, I've rolled it. And should they fail, they face four points of fire <laughs> damage. <laughs> okay, there is a bigger of welch uh, from the dogs uh, as you try to cook them um, without, uh, well, you get to... Are you attacking both of them with, the, with your breath? I weapon? will certainly try. Right, okay. So, um, yeah, you kind of burn their noses and a little bit of their ear, but yeah, they're kind of, they're legging it away from you at this stage because they weren't expecting that. Run! Run, you <laughs> miserable curs! You shall face your doom another day. Okay, um, so next round. So Sasha, Ishka, Vincent, and Tajo, what, what are you doing with Wait, Brackle? wait, wait, someone up, up, please. <laughs> <laughs> we got you, Brackler. All right, so the dogs kind of mm. leg it away, um, and you go Don't forget up, my dragon! You go up the steps, and yeah, you reach a door. Uh, it's a cranky old door, but it doesn't seem to be locked, if you want to try and okay. open it. Can I just get an yeah. order of how you're traveling? Who's in front, Ladies and who's first. in the middle, and who's at the end? Yeah, oh, Sasha will probably be... Oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh yeah, Sasha is walking maybe in front or Ishka, and Sasha will take uh, Bracklor on her shoulders if he wants to. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Ishka will be behind uh, Sasha. Uh, okay. Uh, okay. Did you see me? Did you see my fire? It was so you enter, you enter a, a quite uh, uh, an empty room um, with uh, some ta with a table and chairs. Um, there's nobody in there, but you see a flight of stairs in the inside, which go up to the next floor. Um, you head up the next floor, and there is a actual table uh, there with a letter on top. 
and uh, there's another door that leads up to the top. Sir, um, can I, can I clarify? Stairs. Did we go in the ground floor taking the bar off the door, or did we come in through the top? So you came in we through the top. You've left the bottom door and now we're going down. No, you're going up. So it's always going up. Is, right? the, is the letter oh. in a language I can read? So there is a letter, yes, and it says, Dear Skullface, I have heard our initial stalling phase is working well. Continue with the interruption on our targets. Well done. Evidence! I do not think they are aware of what is going on, but we must f move forward with our second phase. I hope you are advancing well, and I start to hear the reports of further disruptions around the barony, as we have discussed. No more delays will be allowed. Payment will be provided once I receive results. Your time is running out. Would Roll we recognize uh, Skullface? Was that who it was addressed to? Yes, Skullface is who it was addressed to. Uh, is there any role or, or any sort of thing uh, check we could make to... to Vincent, are you familiar with a Skullface? So it is signed at the bottom with E-D. Ah, that is a shame. You never like to see it. But I suppose it happens to all men at some point. Yes. I hear this pill. Uh -huh. So, uh, there's another door going up further. Yep. There's another does, door. Uh, the room that we're in now, does that seem to be the one that is is uh, billowing the, the yellow smoke, or is that still no. above us? No, they're still above you. After you, Sasha. Sasha pulls out her crossbow and, and keeps an eye out for anyone on approach. Sasha, okay. did you say you want to take be in the back or in the right behind the ladies uh i think it would be more most beneficial if i were in the middle in case something did happen and people need you so um you go you keep on going up uh through the uh building uh you reach another level with uh, like a storage space uh with um some barrels uh with some kind of black powder in it um you keep on going up and uh yeah, just for fun can i Put a fill a pouch with black powder. Can you? Sorry. Yeah, you can. Yeah, you. you yeah. Do, do yeah. I have any idea what this black powder is? Uh, do a uh, um. Let's see. Uh, initiative. Uh, ro sorry, not initiative. Intelligence. Intelligence, intelligence roll. Um, DC fourteen. Not my strong suit. Uh, ah, <laughs> oh, thirteen. Oh well. I I feel like I know what this <clears throat> is, but I'm gonna study it later. Let's go. Yeah. So you go, um, you go up the te up the staircase, and uh, you go. The last the last level is uh, access through a staircase from the outside of the building, and you are obviously six stories above uh, from the ground. Um, and you reach uh, a door, and you can hear a conversation going on. Um, you hear a deep voice. My employer grows impatient with your lack of progress. And then another squeakier voice. Oh, they must understand. It takes time. The process can't be rushed. The chemicals are very volatile. So am I. It's been a week already. I want results. And then you hear... Here's a small sample for you and your employer. Uh, tell them there's more where this came from. Uh, but we need more time. What do you do? I think we should bust the door in and I threaten to start casting fires. It varies. I know what the word volatile means. And it means that I am very dangerous right now. Busting in, I'm there with you. Ishka? Yeah. <laughs> you first. Let's go. Okay, and with Breckler on my shoulders, I will try to ram down the door or open it if it's open. Uh, okay, uh, no, it was so you here. tell me, are you going to try and open it or are you going to try and uh, smash it down? Um, smash it down. <laughs> I want this to work. Second time ready. Second time right. today. Okay, DC, DC 13. Anybody going to help the, uh, Sasha here? I will help it, obviously. Okay, Sasha, you tr you're can. rolling with advantage. I will hang back on the back of the shoulder so as not to be crushed. <laughs> 21. 21. Right. Okay. Rubbing speed! You smash <laughs> the door uh, in and you start to rush in together and your sight, you see four, well, you see four people in this room. Um, it's a quite, it's a very tight space. 
Um, you, it's, it looks like a, like a laboratory. There's a Bunsen burners and this liquid's bubbling around. Um, uh, it looks very uh, flammable and there's loads of chemical reactions happening. Um, the first thing you notice is that everybody is wearing a mask. Okay. Um, you see that um, if you cast any kind of uh, flame spells, or uh, there is a chance of explosion. And I immediately you... produce a flame in my hand. Do you do that? I immediately. Yes, I do. So let me give you the description because you are fairly okay. I will let me give you the description and then and then um, we will have a check. We'll have a check about this um, because the first thing I need you to all do is mm -hmm. roll for um, toxic fumes. Okay. All right. Uh, Constitution. Eleven. Um, just it's just uh, a, a, it's just a roll for a DC eleven. Um, just a straight roll. Yes. All right. Well, I'll do a constitution save because that's a straight roll for me. That's an eight. Okay. So. Ooh, everybody six, else? 16 11? for me. Pajo has a nine. I have an 11. 17 okay. for Ishka. So the first, obviously, you're taking in the fumes. You're seeing these four figures. Everybody who's under 11 has a minus two to any combat rolls. Your kind of your vision is starting to get a little bit fuzzy and you're not able to focus very well. And you're starting to, yeah, your thought process is a bit dim at this stage. Um, there is um, the four people that are there. You have like two people standing with like chemical robes on. Uh, one's wearing a green robe and the other one's wearing a uh, brown one. They look like alchemists and they're working with the test tubes uh, behind them. And obviously they are um, having to stop. Now, what you can see is that the, all the volatile liquids that are happening there right now are that they're going to stop and um, there will be an explosion in 1D rounds after the first round. Okay. And, um, yeah, the other two people, one is wearing a mask, but with a skull, like a big skull face on the side. He looks bigger and has a mace. And the other one uh, is just a normal thug. Um, they're all wearing masks, so you can't recognize them. And you're hearing a muffled voice. Now, what do you do? You have uh, obviously surprised them. So you have uh, a surprise action or attack or whatever you want to do. All right. So, so um, sorry, can we just roll initiative? Well, we're not this yeah. we won't roll initiative this round, but next one we will because you have obviously uh, initiative. So I'll just go around the table. If that's okay. Tajo, what do you do? Um, Tajo is going to uh, shoot his crossbow at one of the uh, lesser alchemists. Uh, that is a natural 19 on the roll. I think he gets a plus four to the ro to his attacks with a crossbow. Uh, okay, yes, sorry. so that is a total of 23. Okay, sorry. I was just trying to explain. The, the, the figures, the two thugs are in front of the uh, the, the, the two alchemists. I'm sorry I didn't describe this before. Oh, well, then my apologies. The, the oh, yeah, thugs so are who I'm aiming at first. So you're, you're shooting at the thug. Is that correct? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, and you rolled over 20, I believe, or your overall score is over 20? Yes, the total was a 23. Okay. Um, I will give you a description of what is happening after I go through everybody. Ishka, uh, sorry, what are you at, doing? At 21, I forgot to minus two from the fumes. Okay. Ishka? Ishka will just step forward. In the name of the Baron, you're all under arrest. Surrender now or don't. I really wish that you won't because then they get to cut your heads off. Okay, do you want to roll a um, intimidation? Uh, yes, thank you. And Can I is... help her with that by also drawing my great sword and standing next to her? Uh, intimidation is yes. not really her strong point, I just discovered. <laughs> so, uh, but I, if the roll's that's okay, why. It's, it's, a, it's a flat 14. Ooh, okay. So, yeah. You kind Whatever, of, um... I don't know what the benefit is of Sasha, though. So, um... In what sense? Sorry, Ishka. Uh, yeah, I Sasha was, 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 also, was attempting oh, to help. Sorry, yeah. I'm, that's a, I'm a, helping by yeah, drawing my greatsword and standing next to Ishka. So, Sasha, sorry, can you describe that again? I missed it. 
uh, I'm standing next to Ishka drawing my great sword while she, while she is saying that to kind of make it more impactful. Okay, advancement. You can have an advance. Ah, seventeen. Okay. Ooh. Okay. I'll give you. I'll give you a description in a minute. Uh, Bracklow and Binson. All right. Well, uh, immediately upon entering, I inhale my entire body weight in fumes. And I'm now acting a bit out of character. <laughs> so, I see the people. I have poison. You will taste my poison. And I throw it at the biggest guy that I can see. <laughs> are, you, are you trying to throw it or are you trying to hit him with it? I mean, it's a. It, is is it functioning as a dart or a javelin? Uh, well, it's designed to be. I mean, I could probably point. just try and dive bomb him and just friggin' ah! <laughs> <laughs> I'll do that. Sure, okay. why not? Okay. Uh, I'm high as balls. <laughs> Vincent, uh, what do you do? Uh, I'm I'm concerned about my friend Bracklore, so I'm I'm going to follow along as he sails through the air. I'm going to run along beneath and try to uh, actually hamstring with my daggers on the same target. Okay, so you are attacking Skullface or the one with the mask? We are the, getting. Does skull he have a Skullface mask? Yes. Yeah, not on his side. Then yes. Okay, um, Tajo, who are you shooting exactly? The um, the, oh, one of the thugs that was in front of everybody. Okay. Uh, preferably the one that would be most in the way of getting from Sasha or Ishka to the masked one. Okay, so damage-wise, what was the, your role in damage? Uh, crossbow is a 1d8 plus 2, uh, so 3. Okay, so uh, you hit him uh, in the knee, and yeah, he's um, he's... <laughs> He kneels down, and uh, but he kind of topples over and hits the side of the building. And you immediately notice the whole building kind of rockety uh, and move. Uh, yeah, it becomes kind of a stable. Um, and uh, the craftsmanship. Ishka, uh, your intimidation uh, to is this to. Um, it Brackle, was just, it was the Skullface. whole room. Skullface oh, mainly. Yeah. Yeah. Skullface kind of plays. There's no way we are going to take you. Uh, we're not going to talk any of your BS. So, um, and I was hoping you say that. Good. And Bracklo, uh, roll to yeah. hit. <laughs> All right. Uh, so that is going to be. Uh, DC the, is AC, sorry, AC 15. AC 15. That would be a six. Ah, ah, you kind of hit the, the wooden table, the uh, floor, sorry. Bank. You have okay. 10 minutes left, sorry. Vincent. All right. Uh, swinging in with my daggers or sliding in with my daggers across the floor. Um, that is a 15 to hit for a whopping one, two points of damage. Okay. Ah! Okay. Uh, what was it to hit? Sorry, what did you get to hit? A 15. Okay. Anything about five. When after modification, if you hit anything above 20, let me know, please. Um, okay. Uh, you hit. And uh, next round, let's throw uh, Tajo. Can we be, please? Uh, is that everybody? I believe Sasha, Ta Ishka. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tajo, can you please roll for initiative? Absolutely. A total of 20. Okay, I think it's your uh, it's your roll. Tajo, what are you doing? Alrighty. Um, how close is the nearest person to me? Um, the thug. The nearest. Uh, you can go, enemy. except for the alchemists who are behind, you can. It's a very cramped space. There's obviously um, four plus five, there's nine people in a kind of a small room. Um, uh yeah that's so you can kind of move where you want with the limitations that you cannot reach the back of the alchemists where they're trying to work actually okay uh, the reason i ask is because i ha with my stage background i can use shocking grasp once per day 
and I was just going to see if there was somebody that I could get to this turn with which I can, you know. Zzz. Yep, you could. I mean, you can reach any of the th- uh, the skull face or the thug. Oh, well, I don't like the idea of being next to the 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 big bad guy, so I'm going to go for one of the thugs. Um, so that is a his AC is twelve. His AC is twelve. Uh, that is a total of of fourteen. So that hits. Yep. Uh, Shocking okay. Graphics does the straight D8 of lightning. Uh, that is six lightning damage to Thug. Okay. I'll give you a description in a minute. Uh, Ishka? She's just going to, in one motion, slide her battle axe from her side and across the Thug. In her mind, Skullface is the one that has to stay alive, if any. Uh, so she's just going to attack the Thug straight away, if okay. that's possible. Yep. Um, roll. Yep, she hits an armor class of 21, doing nine points of damage. Okay. Uh, Bracklon? I have another dart! I'm gonna run between his legs! <laughs> Get behind him! Okay. Stab him in the calf! No, the back of the knee! Okay. Yes! Roll, roll to hit with an AC 15. Alright. Come on. Roll. Roll, you bastard. You can do it. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. We believe Vincent, in tell you. Tell me what you're doing. Come on. And Sasha, please. Nine. Oh. Okay, you miss Bracklow. All right. Uh, Sasha, please go. Uh, Sasha says, thank you for the invitation. Don't move. And she takes her great sword <laughs> and slashes into his legs of the skull guy. Okay. Uh, roll, roll to hit. Nope. Eight. <laughs> okay, you miss. And uh, Vincent, <laughs> we gotta take this guy. All right, here we go. Stabbing, uh, just pretty much the the uh, the calf as Brackle was doing. Uh, ooh, that is a natural nineteen plus four, so that's twenty three. I only do one damage, but this time I'm going to remember that I'm a rogue and I have sneak attack. Ah, okay. And he has an ally in <laughs> melee. <Yes. laughs> well, Woo-hoo. is he really in melee? I mean, I kind of feel like Brackle's just waving around these <laughs> days. He's trying to move some. <laughs> I'm <laughs> fighting oh. ghosts. Thank you very much. <laughs> oh, demons. All right. For an extra two points of damage. Uh, sorry, that Pretty was at skull face, yeah? Yes, that was its skull face, yes. Okay, um, so uh, Tajo and Ishka, you uh, both uh, swipe at uh, at the thug. Um, your cuts um, kind of sever one of his arms and it starts to fall off and he stumbles back and he hits the side of the, of the building again and the whole building starts rocking and you start getting tiles falling through the wall, from the, from the roof. And... Um, oh, dear. Bracklaw, you missed, and uh, Vincent, your damage uh, also kind of the hit the foot of uh, of uh, the skull, of skull face, and he's kind of trying to jump, and he's banged himself against the side of the building also, and that makes even more of a rumble. And um, Tasha, you missed, I believe. I missed. Yes. Sadly. Okay. Yeah. My well, the. Uh, Skullface and the alchemist. Now the alchemists uh, pick up a potion, uh, a green one of the green potions, and rolls it for uh, at Ishka, and they roll, and you see a green like flask flying into you, and it hits you directly. Are you wearing any armor, Ishka? What is this armor you speak of? I am Babari. No. Okay. So you take, it's a, like acid starts to burn your skin. Uh, six points of damage. It's trifle. That's and best you can do. You better do better. You get a, another, uh, sorry, another, the other person gets a red potion and he shoots it at uh, Binson and you just bear with me a second. And you get a... Um, 
can you do a DC uh, 15 uh, check? Um, Armor uh, DC 15 check of what? Uh, for a uh, constitution check, sorry. Oh, probably not, but hey, let's see. You can do it! Believe that in is you. a natural two plus oh. one! <laughs> Can't do it. Or two. Okay. Um, so this red liquid kind of starts to break into fumes and you get in, you inhale them and you start feeling that you're uh, being attacked by a swarm of bats and you start to you start attack attacking yourself um, unless somebody comes you and see them too thanking you <laughs> in the face to try and wake you up and yeah the two the two uh, skull well the skull face tries to hit you uh, he attacks Sasha for 14. Is yeah, that hit? Doesn't hit. No. no. Doesn't. Okay. Uh, next round. So now you see everybody's kind of really, really nervous. Uh, the liquids are starting to really bubble, and the building is kind of really uh, shaking. Um, what do you do? Um, does it look like this mixture of chemicals is about to explode? Uh, it could do. Yes. It looks like everything's kind of bubbling really, really quickly right now. Um. Taj was just it like, looks, yeah, it looks imminent. Go, go. Yeah, he's just like, everybody go. It's oh, I'm beyond that now. <laughs> the bats, where did the bats come from? The hell! The is like, they, they are, are the bats of the Varnus! Ah! <laughs> we shall send them back. Bats. Those are too small for bats from the Varnus. Trust me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> They're enormous! You have one minute to tell me what you're doing or everything. I am going to, as I have no more darts left, Shove three magic missiles up his buttocks! <laughs> <laughs> okay, go for it. <laughs> All right. I think... Uh, for eight points of eight force points. damage! Rectal force damage! Oh. Oh. Rectal force damage. Oh. Sorry, okay. Um, just one minute, Brackler. Ishka, what are you trying to say? Uh, I think Ishka is going to grab Brackler and mm. Binson. Yeah. And yep. just dash for the door. Okay. Yeah. Sasha was want, wanted to do the same. So if she doesn't manage to somehow get one of them, uh, she will take the other one and just run for it. Okay. Tajo. Uh, Tajo, for some if uh, for some reason Sasha and Ishka can't get either one of Brackle or Benson, mm. grab the grab the one that they can or help them get that one and then. Okay. You kind of grab Binson uh, while he's wailing. Uh, Ishka, you're kind of quite strong, so you're kind of picking up. Uh, Sasha, you try and grab Brackler as he's trying to do a spell, and you <laughs> him, and you leg down. And just as you start legging down, the whole top of the roof just goes kaboom. Just do me a roll. I was me. I did that. Clarity, um, uh, DC eleven. Everyone. Yep. So everybody who's holding on to going down the steps. This is your final stay. Yep. You are on time. Eight. <laughs> 18 minutes. Uh, 18. 17. So who said a nine? I said a nine. I say, okay. Brackler, fly! <laughs> 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 Sasha starts to fall as uh, he's taking Brackler, who's kind of hallucinating right now. And yeah, you're, you're, you're falling down. And yeah, everybody else. Uh, Sasha, Brackler, you're going to try and glide, I suppose, with Sasha, or are you going to let him fall to his death? Well, I got an eight, so. Oh, okay, so you're falling. I imagine I start gliding towards the explosion. <laughs> because he's not dead yet! <laughs> okay, so I'm going to put the mist down on that one, and uh, I'll leave it for the next episode about what actually happened. Um, yeah, thank you very much. The great explosion. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What is going to happen now is I'm going to show you some videos on how the players are going to be scoring the GM. And when we return in about three or four minutes, give or take, we will reveal just how well Andres did tonight and whether he managed to improve upon his scores or not. So stick around. We'll be back shortly.
In the rules category, the first item up for discussion and for scoring is the fair application to all. What does this mean, fair application to all? When a GM is going to make a rules call during the game, regardless of what system you're using, the GM should always make sure that they are at least making the same application of their rules to every player. There is a tendency sometimes for GMs to be a little bit more strict on players who know the rules very well and a little bit more lenient on those who are new to the game. Although this might feel as if you're treating everyone at their own level, it is unfair and we should try and apply it to everyone. So either we're all learning and upping our game or we're all playing a casual game where the rules don't apply. But it should be one or the other. By having multiple different options for each of the players, you can inadvertently start to alienate certain players or cause other players to go, well, why should I bother if he's just going to apply a random rule for me, but for them, they're not going to apply the same rule. She always gives her boyfriend preferential treatment. I should just do whatever the boyfriend's doing to get the same thing. So we need to make sure that whomever or whatever we are GMing at our table is applied to everyone equally. The second section to look at is consistent application. What is consistent application? Well, once a GM has made a rules call, regardless of whether it is the right rule call or not, for the remainder of the session, the GM should stick to that ruling. If she's made the call that the rule is that all characters can move at 35 feet per round, for whatever reason she's decided, then that should be applied for the entire duration of that session. If, on the other hand, one player gets to move at 35, whilst half an hour later everyone's only moving at 30, Unless there's a reason for the rule to change, such as strange physics or unusual environments, it's an inconsistency. We have to make sure that once we have made a rules call, that it remains in play for the duration of the session. Your alternative is to stop the session halfway through, admit that the rules call was wrong, or that it is a house home brew rule, or that the rule is going to remain in play. That's disruptive. We don't want to do that. We also don't want to run with a rule, get to the end of the session and have players going well that's weird can we change it for the next session to make it back in alignment with the rules or to make it a standing rule and the gm goes now nah, well maybe let's see how i feel next week consistency allows everybody to have an equal playing field and that's ultimately what we're looking for is we want the rules to be in the back supporting our game rather than driving our game or driving our players to distraction In the rules category of the scoring card of Training Grounds, we come across the Used Appropriately section. What does this mean? Well, once you have applied a rule, or once you are using a rule, has it been applied appropriately? In some games, you might have the rule of cool, which means the rules are applied when they're needed, but if the character is doing something cool, well, then maybe they don't need to be applied for this particular session. You want your character to somersault through the air, land on the back of the giant four-headed mammoth, and slay the dragon with a bow and arrow that they have just fired using their feet, the rules might say that that's not possible or that it will take you a good 10 to 15 rounds to set up all of that combination. Rule of cool might be, well, no, it doesn't actually need to happen. Let's just make it more dramatic because the creature's on one hit point anyway and whatever the damage is done, the thing will die. So the rules don't apply here, but, well, that might be an appropriate rules call. It very well may be, or maybe not. The exact swing of that is my character takes a step forward. Great, I want you to make an acrobatics check because the ground is slightly uneven. I succeed. Excellent. I take another step forward. Make another ac ac acrobatics check because the ground is still uneven. And you're moving again. 
It is the rule as applied if necessary, but is it appropriate? Is that something that is just going to slow the game right the way down, or is it something that's going to enhance the game and make it more entertaining, whilst at the same time still being consistent and applied to all? It's a complicated tightrope that the GM walks, but if you can apply your rules appropriately with finesse and your players trust you, it can make the game flow like a re okay that's enough of that we can understand how the rules work the scores are in Andres how do you feel you did I enjoyed myself a lot um, I think uh, it was a good adventure obviously a time it's limiting so yeah I kind of uh, had to uh, well it kind of played well with the with the closure so I'm kind of okay uh, I think I've managed to manage the team much better uh the party and um except maybe for some of the dc roles that i wasn't clearly stating what uh characteristics they were based to um yeah overall i'm yeah i'm more happier than than how it ended last week so, yeah, and i, I, I think it. you yeah you have reason for it i think you'll see that that's reflected in those scores i have one question for you did you want us to catch the assassin uh no no, I didn't want you to catch the assassin. Yeah. Um, I was letting you kind of play it out, and it was you could have maybe tried to uh, have a discussion, but Skullface was a hard nut to crack. Um, so yeah, it was purposely difficult, but yeah. Nope, that's all good. I just had that as a question. So let's have a look at your scores. This is what you got last time, if uh, we can look there. And uh, mostly in the upper teens. And when we see your new scores, your new scores reflect upper 20 or mid wow. uh, low 20s, I low should 20s. say, across yeah. most of those sections. So definitely an improvement there well for you. Absolutely yeah, well absolutely. Deserved. I think so. Um, <clears throat> yes. Rules applications scores down a little bit from last week, but again, I think there was a lot of times where you were asking for for rolls, and we weren't sure was it a dexterity saving throw, or was it this, or was it uh, that. But aside from that, I think those scores are absolutely fine. Yeah. Story scores, story across the board, much improved and good stories. I mean, I think we were all following yeah. along with that quite nicely. Um, NPCs, you always do well on NPCs, but you did really well this time around. I think they were they were a lot better. Yeah. None of the NPCs felt like they needed to be there or didn't have a reason to be there. They were there because that's what the story sort of required for them. So I think that was really good. Um, your descriptions and your engagement, your senses are all very good there. I like the fact that you definitely definitely restrained yourself from last week where you had lots of exposition now we're down to just just the basics of what we needed and i think that worked really really well and then table management well time management is always a challenge but i oh, i also suspect that's because we would want more time uh, so, so you should have made you should have made the 90 minutes somehow 180 minutes or something along those lines so i wouldn't um, have given up one minute of that though no, you know, I wouldn't. Well, I wouldn't have said cut anything. So yeah, we <laughs> we just wanted it more time. Absolutely, wow, I yeah. completely agree, and I think that that is the strength of the of the game is if if everyone wants to carry on going, um, and I think that it's it's also uh, an interesting thing to say. Well, we wanted more time with each scene as well to plot and to plan and to to yeah. explore and to investigate and, and and that sort of thing i do have another question for you the posters were they stolen were they being stolen or were we just lazy and hadn't done anything so there is a black <laughs> hand obviously there is an interest uh there is an actual uh thane who's paying uh an earl inside to create uh uh, this kind of dissonance and he's paying different gangs to uh, sure. work and, and destroy that yeah. uh, so that's kind I of took it by your accent that he you know he had very excellent penmanship <laughs> <laughs> yes absolutely so there was another entity working working with those posts. so they were being stolen so all right no that that's that's good okay if you have questions for uh, any of us or for the GM please ask your questions I'm going to go with some of the ones that I know normally uh, get asked we've got 10 minutes before the end of the show so I'm going to start in reverse order um, Sasha what would you have liked more of well Sasha would have liked more fighting 
<laughs> because she didn't hit once with her great sword. <laughs> oh no. Oh yeah. Oh, that's but right. I mean that's that's not necessarily uh, I mean, You missed all your rolls. Or javelin yeah, exactly. or anything. Break a doll. Yeah. Oh you I'll need to break a second doll, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Well, I would have liked the, the fight to go on for a little bit more because I, I was getting into that, but I wouldn't have cut anything out from the rest, actually, mm. because I really liked the, the playing out of the, the the following the guy on the roof scene and just plotting what we were going to do and the scene with the with the mini dragon uh, that was awesome, going, yeah. going to the do uh, to the two dogs. So I don't know. Yeah. I would have liked more time, basically. <laughs> Absolutely. More. Absolutely. Yeah, that's it. Uh, GM, is there anything that you would have cut out? Um, so I thought maybe the beginning could have been streamlined a little bit with the rider coming in and maybe paraphrase that, and we would have earned a bit more time there. Um, and it kind of railroaded you to the next scene and didn't give you the chance to be able to investigate. Um, there was a lot of role playing and a lot of discussion between the players and that took a lot of time of like investigation and yeah, you were kind of playing yeah. your own characters, which I think is fine, but obviously with such a bound, I had 30 minutes for kind of each scene and yeah, that's kind of, kind of how I was running it. I was kind of a little bit skeptical with the dogs that maybe I should have taken the dogs out. Um, but I thought initially we were doing okay. Never. Thought, oh, that's gonna take longer Never. than I anticipated. I, it's like, oh no, I should have maybe taken yeah. the dogs out. So that was yeah, that was that was maybe a scene that because yeah, in my play test that I did, Don Bracklore very quick, needed to be yeah. absolutely. <laughs> but then when Vincent said I'm using the clockwork, it's like oh okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> Thank I you. I do think appreciate that. <laughs> what you did there was perfect in terms of the damage that Bracklore dealt was insignificant, uh, relatively speaking. But having the dogs just run away was perfect. It dealt with the entire encounter exactly yeah. how it should have played yes. out. I think if you had said they suddenly start attacking Bracklaw, I think that would have been a bad call to make. So I think that was a really good, really good call. Uh, yeah. One of the questions that has come through is, um, what was your prompt for this adventure? Do you have okay. it handy somewhere? Hey, yes, I do. All so right. it is. The PCs are hired by a human baron to put up posters around his barony. War has been declared by the Dwarvish Thane MacDragon, and all humans are to report to the nearest sheriff, sheriff to be recruited into the human forces. A local, key, a local keeps taking the posters down. There you go. Oh. There you go. There you go. Wow, okay. Like, and somehow we managed uh, magical d munitions lab. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah. There, that was a second phase to try and create uh, hallucinating bombs around the. I'm. I'm just gonna say it. I if, love that. If, if Bracklor hadn't been tripping, he would have absolutely threatened everyone in the room. I'm gonna send us all to hell if you guys don't get on the ground right now. <laughs> I was two I seconds behind that. you for that because I can do a sacred flame also. Oh my goodness. You see how oh smart they goodness. are because that's radiant damage. But yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so then um, just turning, let us turn to Taijo. What, what did you enjoy the most out of this session? Uh, very much it was the party dynamic and the banter that we had back and forth with each other. Um, the only thing I really would have wanted... Uh, was just more time because Tajo is a bit more of a contemplative, uh, um, investigative kind of character. He just dives into information as best he can. Um, so the session was a bit more, you know, skulky and assassins and stuff like that, which I I loved. Uh, but it would have been nice having a bit more time after the fact to to investigate everything and get more of the the story behind it all. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Bracklord, do you think you managed to get your balance right? Because you were trying for a variety I, of Bracklord. Yes, <laughs> I believe that I absolutely did. I, I mean, to be able to go from using my breath weapon to frighten two creatures, you know, several times my size, and then asking to get picked up. Um, I feel like the dichotomy was there. I, I was completely satisfied with everything except for my roles. Uh, right. I was completely satisfied. Uh, although I think we got some comedy from those yes um I, I i almost wish i had rolled a one so i could have stuck myself with the darts <laughs> oh no <laughs> uh, that would be a good but, Rackler, i think yeah. that yeah. is another question that does come yeah. from that though is um andres with regards to that dart yeah 
you had created for yourself a GM mechanic problem mm-hmm. because by having it affect that gnome uh, that 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 informant so quickly, you now created this dart of ultimate death, right? Yeah, and oh, then was, yeah. and then Bracklaw got two of them. So I was watching going, okay, you're going to have, if, if Bracklaw hits your big bad with one of these darts, there needs to be, there's going to have to be some kind of, of, of reaction, right? And especially since Tajo tried to bring back the, the, the gnome, did you have a plan for what was going to happen with those darts? So um, with the previous playtest, I also saw the, the players pick it up and they didn't end up using it. So I wasn't too worried initially uh, with what was going to happen. Uh, but again, if I put something in and the players want to use it, yeah, there wasn't any magical items or anything like that. So yeah, I, I, I roll with what would have happened. And again, all the NPCs were okay to die. So I wasn't too worried about mm-hmm. that. Okay. Um, so yeah, it, it kind are. of gives a bit of, of variability. And I was hoping you were going to use it with the dogs. But you kind of, yeah. And then you sh- well, again, you said that they've gotten oh, right in my face. Like, oh, for yeah. God's sake. <laughs> yeah. Dogs in the face. So the I was going for something where I could hit both of them in one go. Yeah, right. I was thinking, like, you were going to use it. I was just going to say yeah. you'd punch the noses and that's it. Dogs gone. Also, I don't want to murder dogs. Come on. <laughs> right. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's, yeah, it's like, yeah, kill the dogs. But we, we, we don't have to kill the doggos. Yeah. Um, so uh, another question. What's the diff? Uh, the, blah, blah, blah. What's the biggest difference in your mindset between your first session and today's session? So I think there's a bigger group dynamic uh, in this session. There's been a lot more role playing, and I think also, um, yeah, I found it harder to give more space for the players to to express uh, than the previous one. Um, although the, the other one was a long, lot longer, kind of in different spaces. Um, but it had a bit more coherence. This one, we're kind of swapping and changing very rapidly of scenes. So I found that a little bit more challenging. If I may, I, I actually watched uh, your first session and I thought this one flowed very well. And when I watched your first playback, it was, we kind of went from meeting the king and then suddenly they were having dinner and then suddenly they were in the dungeon. And it felt, I thought, a little more uh, railroady than this, which flowed naturally from the bar or outside the bar to inside the bar to on top of the bar to the tower. You you guided our choices rather than uh, guiding our play. You know, yeah. mm-hmm. you you okay. with the lo- the most logical choice. As long as we were being rational, we were yeah. gonna go the direction that you were going. Right. You know. Yeah. At, um, at the beginning, was Ishka was saying, "Oh, we're gonna go. We we'll start investigating." I thought, "Okay, that's gonna be a tricky one." If they start going all over the place, so yeah, I kind of try to tone that down and yeah not 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 feel too much like oh no you have to go to the inn which you do obviously but yeah Yeah. that was a tricky thank you vincent for that thank you it is always an interesting one because you had a a three-way split at one point um which it it it, it was kind of going okay how are you going to play with that three-way split because you had ishka in the tavern then you had sasha on the roof and and then you had the three characters kind of following down in in the street and that's that's why i asked you if you didn't want us to initially catch that that assassin because it did feel like there was quite a bit of pushback on us catching that assassin yeah. Because there was, you know, I mean, Sash yeah, is going to yeah, come and die. I did, I did make a mistake, and um, Bracklow should not be able to throw that spell because you wouldn't be able to actually see see that. So basically, you aren't going to catch that, that 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 assassin. There is going to be a potential fight. He is also rolling to jump over the deck, the decks. So that's kind of depends on mm-hmm. what the rolls say. Um, but it, it would end with a fight. Uh, between Sasha or whoever is out there and the rogue, and the rogue. But if if he if Sasha hits the rogue, he falls to his death. If uh, yeah, if uh, if he misses his rogue, he's going to fall to his death. So yeah, that that NPC well, potentially it, it, is going to die. I'm sorry. It it did feel like that's what you were trying to get to, and I wonder if there was maybe a miscommunication between you and Sasha at that point, because I think Sasha, you were running along asking essentially, can I get that one last javelin throw? before yeah. he disappears into the mists, right? Yeah, that's that's my mistake, because oh, I was trying to say only melee weapons can fight. That's what I was trying to express, which I missed Sorry. with Bracklaw, obviously letting him fire, and mm. Sasha was trying to throw his spear. So I was yeah. trying to make it a little bit hard and not say no, but say, yeah, no. I mean, if you stop. Yeah, so was, that, yeah. that was where it kind of got really confusing, and then mm. the flying speed getting sort of kneecapped in that case, you know, was so a little the, bit. Yeah, with the flying speed, Flying uh, with the playtest allowed Bracklow to fly, and he just flew up to the top of the tower. 
Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting one. Nonetheless, we have come to the end of tonight's show. I think we can all say that we had a lot of fun. And uh, all that remains of me is to say thank you very much to our GM for running the session for us. Really appreciate that. Thank you to all of my wonderful players. Uh, they're not my players. Oh, my goodness. You see what happens when you do these things. And thank you to my fellow players uh, for being absolutely awesome and for bouncing accents and ideas and all of that kind of wonderful stuff. A big thank you to Laura Bones and to Lauren Gray, who are our moderators on the various chat platforms. And, of course, to you for watching and supporting the show all the way through to the end. If you haven't hit that like button, now's the time to do it if you are on YouTube. This is the last of the training grounds season one and uh, for more information moving forward just watch all of our social medias as well as stay tuned to this channel of course for your regular output of content which from august is going to change up slightly there's something new coming your way so watch out for that and then finally 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 next weekend is uk games expo here in the uk they are COVID proofed as much as they can possibly be, but I will be there for the entire weekend with some wonderful, wonderful people. And uh, if you are managing to get there, come and say hello. Until next time, however, I wish you and yours the very best and happiest of gaming. Goodbye. Thank you. Yes. Thank you to my playtesting team. Thank you. <laughs>